it is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So <laughs> I'm burning up. Um, hello, friends. How you guys doing? So ever since I got the LG G Stylo, um, because of the controversy behind it where some people absolutely love the device and then there's people who are absolutely having a bad experience with the device, I've decided that for the next month, I'm going to have the G Stylo go up against every device I own. And I've already done two already. We did um, the ZTE Max. We did the Warp Sync. So for today's video, we're going to be comparing the G Stylo for Boost Mobile against the Sharp Aquas Crystal. Which one's better? Let's find out. So as I said in the beginning, we're going to be comparing the G Stylo to the Aquas Crystal. As you guys see the G Stylo on the left, the Aquas Crystal on the right. Um, two phones offered by Boost Mobile, so of course, like everyone likes, we're going to compare the specs really fast. So both phones are offered by Boost Mobile. The G Stylo weighs 5.8. 5 ounces as the Aquas Crystal weighs 4.97 ounces. The G Stylo has a 3000 milliamp hour battery and the Aquas Crystal has a 2040 milliamp hour battery. As the G Stylo's battery is removable, the Aquas Crystal is non removable. The G Stylo has a 5.7 inch display, the Aquas Crystal has a 5 inch display. Both of them are running LCD TFT at 720 by 1280 pixels. They both have a 1.2 gigahertz quad-core processor by Qualcomm, the G Stylo having the Snapdragon 410 as the Aquas Crystal has the Snapdragon 400. Both have 8 gigs of raw internal storage, but the G Stylo only offers 3.4 gigabytes available to the user for downloading apps and, and stuff, as the Aquas Crystal gives 4.1 gigabytes available. The G Stylo has 1 gig of RAM, as the Aquas Crystal has 1.5 gigs of RAM, both accept uh, memory expansion with a micro SD card. Besides all the specs and everything, the first thing I want to talk about is design. Now, with the design, obviously the Aquas Crystal is going to take is, is it's going to take the win. To be honest with you guys, I mean you have a device that has edge-to-edge -edge bezel-less display. Okay. Uh, Sharp really wanting to kind of do something out of the box with the Aquas Crystal and they achieved that. Placing the front facing camera at the bottom chin because that is the only place where there is any bezel visible is the bottom chin of the device. Of course it being 5 point, well not just not 5 point but just a 5 inch display. It's still compact, it's still nice, nice to grip on um, for a 5 inch foam. It's not super big. So if you're someone that doesn't want to hold a big phone, doesn't want to have, you know, the, the the cramps in your palm from holding a device a lot, then the Aquas Crystal is really not going to kill your palm. It's going to give you that nice 5 inch display so you get a really big size, you know, screen to watch things on or play games on without it cramping your hand. <clears throat> G-Stylo, kind of the same when it's compared to the ZTE Max, but not in this scenario. And, so it's it's a wide phone. It's a lot wider than <clears throat> than the Aquas Crystal is. So you guys can see. It's got a little extra to the right of it. Besides the height and everything like that, the G Stylo is a lot wider. Display. G Stylo. One of the things that people have been talking about is this weird line. I don't know. I'll try to, you know, bring the camera in close. I don't know if you can really see the lines, but there are some. I guess you really have to be in person to see them. Now, a lot of people have been complaining about them, and I kind of have an idea what they are about. So, one of the things that the G Stylo comes with that's really nifty is the stylus. And I believe that's what the capacitive lines that you find on the screen when the screen is turned off, that's what it's for. Let me give you guys a demo. I'll use the G-Stylo stylus with the Aquas Crystal. Okay, like by now, there should be some kind of response. And 
Sometimes it will. Like, I don't know. I was, I was messing with it earlier. There we go. Oh, it opened Instagram. Awesome. So pressing really hard gets a reaction out of the screen. But as you guys can see, you got to press really hard and you can wind up damaging the tip uh, just from pressing that hard. So obviously that tells me that these lines on the G-Style that everyone's complaining about, I believe, has to do with the fact that the stylus, and this is just lightly touching. Okay, so I mean it's real easy. You know, you use a stylus, you can control the screen. You don't have to use your fingers if you don't want to. Pretty much hold it like a notepad. It's really neat, and it, you know, taking notes and stuff like that. Like you know, if you want to show people like how hot it is, and you want to circle. I mean, you can do that. You know, with uh, with the quick notepad. So, you have that feature. So that's what the the lines on the on the screen is for. It's the sensitivity to the stylus that the phone comes with, which is pretty neat. The phone has a built-in stylus. It's nothing like the Galaxy Notes, but uh, you know what? It's a budget device, guys, so let's kind of remember that. Everyone's trying to achieve, you know, flagship standards with a budget phone. It's not happening. Audio quality, these two pretty much match up the same. They're very quiet phones. Uh, the G Stylo playing music, I usually keep it around 80%, as I said before, because once it starts to go up, it tends to uh, become distorted. And with the Aquas Crystal, pretty much the same, except with minus the distortion with its uh, bottom speaker right there. It's Squawk Box, is what I call them. Um, the sound doesn't get distorted, but it's very low, very, very whisper like. And so if you're looking for something to play music without earbuds, Neither one of these are going to be something that you want to to get. Let's go on the camera. I'm going to bring my little, little test subject there. So we'll start off with the Aquas Crystals camera. Okay. So you have an array of, you know, options. I'm going to switch it up to... 8 megapixels at a 4.3 ratio. So let's just snap a photo. Okay. And uh, we'll do the same with the G Stylo. Clear out notifications here. Okay, so we'll launch camera. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so now both are pretty much saved up. Uh, let's go here. Okay. This is how the picture looks. Um, my camera doesn't do it justice for the Aquas Crystal because it on uh, my camera right now, it shows the Aquas Crystals picture it looks a little washed, but it's actually not. Um, it's just lighter. I noticed that uh, with the G Stylo, the green on my little Android speaker is more true to same than it is on the Aquas Crystal. The, Aqu the Aquas Crystal makes it a little lighter, but that's camera quality. But they both actually take good good pictures. I've had uh, I've taken some photos with the Aquas Crystal that's done some some justice, especially outside. One of the things I do want to tell you guys though is uh, when it comes to taking videos, the G Style is going to take it hands down. The only reason why is there's this weird bug with the Aquas Crystal that when you actually take video, it sounds like you're talking through like a filter. It distorts the audio so bad, it's just headaches and sharp has no re you know they have no knowledge they have no reason well, not no reason but they just don't know what is causing that bug uh, so that's actually pretty sad um, 
Let's see. Let me uh, let's put these guys right here so I can finish up on some touch base with some other things while they're running their benchmarks. And take three. Let's run a test. Okay. So I had some minor technical difficulties, but um, the Aquas Crystal does have a lot of bugs, which I think really takes away, you know, a good experience that you could have with this device. There is a screen bug that tends to start happening, almost mimicking lag, which I've determined it's not actual lag, you know, it's, it, it, it's a bug with the screen communicating with the device. Because you can actually close out every app. You can pretty much like force stop every app. You could um, stop all background apps. Where you would think that the device would run a lot smoother and cleaner having, you know, RAM freed up and, you know, cache pretty much like wiped. So, you know, it's rebuilding cache again. You would think that it would run fairly okay. And it actually does it. Like sometimes, you know, the screen does not register your, your touch. So when you're typing on a keyboard, you touch a letter and it really does not respond at all. So the letter does not pop up. You're making a lot of um, errors in your text messaging and stuff like that. And it gets frustrating when you try to swipe in between screens. Sometimes, it, you know, it does not switch over to the next screen. It's It, it just mimics lag and it's really, really bad. Uh, I've actually, you know did everything that I possibly could by like, you know, turning off animation scales and developer options and all that. And it's still, you know, it's helped slightly, but not a whole lot. Now the LG G Stylo is not a clean device either. It has its bugs. Like I mentioned earlier, notification, sometimes it does not notify you with your text messages. I'm really trying to figure out what it is that's causing it, you know, because you do have smart lock and all these other things that kind of like overlap with the notifications, they actually interfere with notifications. So I'm trying to figure out if there's something that is default on that kind of disrupts, you know, notifications from coming through, or if it's just the device itself. I know one other person on YouTube uh, left me a comment, which I appreciate, you know, because I thought I'll, my phone was the only one doing it, and their phone's doing it too. So now it's starting to pop up that you know the G Stylo may have or does have some bug issues with notifications. Um, Another thing that, you know, I kind of find a problem with the G-Stylo is that it runs heavy. Um, and this is just an LG thing that I noticed because the, the LG Vault had the same problem. You can take off as much applications as you want. You can de-bloat the phone completely and it, and it still sucks up a lot of RAM, which causes uh, lagginess at times. And I know a lot of people have said, you know, it's well, it's Linux, you know, wait, you know. Uh, freed RAM is wasted RAM. Well, I mean, that may be true, but behavior of the device, the more RAM used, the more laggy it becomes. And that's, a, you know, a physical behavior thing you can easily catch. When you free some RAM, it actually performs better. So that is why there's like, you know, Android task killers and all that kind of stuff. And I noticed that the LG G Stylo runs very heavy. So at, at times it, it's going to lag. But, you know, at, for me... I'm a patient person. I can deal with it. You know, I know there's people out there who pretty much they want to take a phone out of the box, use it right away, and just want to use it like as if there's not any problems in the world. And let me tell people right now, there's no such thing as a perfect phone because not even, not even Apple with the iPhone is a perfect phone. Because if it was perfect, there would be no need for them to continuously make another generation every year. So there is no such thing as a perfect phone. But it's just what you're willing to tolerate. My final thoughts on both devices that they're they're both great pickup options for Boost Mobile. The only problem that I think people are going to have with the Aquas Crystal is the the screen bug and um, the sound itself. And if you're someone who likes to root, no root for the Aquas Crystal. So the benchmarks are done. Uh, let's see, the Aquas Crystal scored eighteen zero seven seven. And a G Stylo score 21757. So there you have it. Um, they're not too far apart in the benchmark scores. Uh, so that's just for people who love, you know, running benchmarks and knowing what the benchmark scores are going to be. So there you have it. Let me turn my little dock right here so you guys can see. Uh, that's that's scores for the device itself. But 
these two devices I consider to be in the innovative category as the G Stylo, you know, with, with the stylus pen, the, you know, the 5.7 inch display, but in, in a more of a compact form factor and not so big as the ZTE Max. You know, it's a great option. It's a great pickup for people. I would definitely recommend the G Stylo to anyone out there. I do know that Boost Mobile doesn't, you know, hasn't gone above and beyond the eight gigabytes of internal storage. I mean, and people are crying, crying out that they want more storage, you know, other than having to buy the flagship phones like the S6 and the S5 or the G2 are like the only ones that are really like over eight gigabytes of internal storage. I agree with everybody out there. And you know what? Um, just know that this is not going to last forever. Eventually, Boost Mobile, in order to stay in business, is going to have to compete with other companies that are offering devices with more storage. So who knows? Um, we may, you know, of course we're going to see better phones in the future. So, But for right now, what Boost Mobile has, honestly, the G Stylo pretty much takes it. Uh, the Aquas Crystal is a good buy, but it just has too many bugs. And so, you know, I know a lot of people are waiting for the Aquas Crystal 2. And I don't know if that's going to come to Boost Mobile, but I'm pretty sure it will. And hopefully I can pick it up. So other than that, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving me that thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, please uh, tell me in the comments why you didn't. And if you guys uh, have not subscribed, do so. Click that subscribe button. And share this on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. Share it with your friends and family. You know, kind of help someone out there kind of make a decision if they're ever deciding between these two devices. And yeah, that's it. My name is Tito, and I'm signing out. Thank you for watching.